Hello guys. I wanted to run by a um, topic that I think that affects a lot of people. And I think that it is a, um, a program that has been added to um, the collective consciousness. And that is about receiving and accepting. And so if as a person or as a parent, you um, struggle with receiving and or accepting your health, love, whatever it may look like for you, then I would really like to bounce this idea off of you and see what you think. And I would love to hear what your opinion is and um, if you can relate to it, how can you relate to it, and how can um, maybe look at it in another way that we can probably just sort of release this program. And so the idea is, is that we have been programmed um, as a majority, you know, obviously it's different for everyone and it may not apply to everyone, but as a majority, we have been sort of taught to um, receive in a form of debt. And what I mean by that is, is that if you feel that if you receive help, then you owe someone or that person a favor, or if you receive something, uh, now you have to pay it back, or you feel guilty for receiving because you feel that, um, uh, you know, you may not be worthy of it, um, or something of the sort. And the reason why I ask this is because as I was doing a, um, I was preparing my Divine Feminine course, um, I was downloaded with this uh, information and I thought it was very interesting because I never saw it that way, I never understood it that way, but it was certainly applied to me as a child. And that is, for example, you know, when somebody, for me, it has always been very hard to receive, to receive help, um, just anything really to receive is pretty hard, usually, especially as a parent, it's very difficult and I'd rather do it all on my own than to receive help. And I've slowly let go, but sometimes to things that are deeper, I still struggle. And this is because it feels that I should be either doing it on my own and if I receive help, now I'm in debt to either a person or a thing or uh, something of the, of the sort. And so if we go back to our own childhood, if you really see even through school systems, through teachers, through people that we know, through our counselors, through um, that may have had been at your home, where the program that in order for us to receive something that we want, we first have to do something that we don't want, or we have to do something, uh, give something that we don't want. And for example, something as small as, if you eat your food, then I'll give you a lollipop. If you um, clean your room, you'll get your tools. If you do your homework, um, you get awarded with this A, right? And so, you know, even though it's very important for our children to uh, learn, of course, um, the reward system um, has gotten us to sort of create that duality of good and bad. And if I don't get the best, then I am bad, right? But it requires for us to do something we don't like and most of the time this is sort of like in learning for example um, a child may not be either ready to learn uh, a subject or something uh, or they may uh, already know it in their board and they don't want to do the homework or something like that but if they don't do it but if they don't get the work done then they get a bad grade so in order for me to get what I want which is a good grade so I can get you know uh, praised by my parents or sword, I have to do this work that I really don't want to do because maybe it's not uh, presented in a form of enjoyment. It's sort of presented in a, in a form of, you know, you have to do the work, you have to sit down um, right when I tell you and that's it, right? Which is why we talk so much about maybe um, doing all, uh, other and alternative parts of uh, uh, alternative forms of uh, learning that can get children to be in love with learning or at least like what they're doing in the moment that they're doing it. So going back to the theory of um, we are doing things as children who are slowly programming the brain to say, in order for me to receive, I have to give or do something I don't want to do. And so when we look at it in that perspective, 
when we grow up, then, you know, we sort of follow that same thing. I work so I can get a paycheck and then rewards I pay my bills, but I'm still not happy and it's not rewarding in any way, shape or form. Um, and if you think about it, it sort of unconsciously passes down through generations and generations and generations. I actually caught myself um, a couple of weeks back uh, my daughter, I really just wanted her to eat something because she was just not eating any food. And she, I know she loves lollipop. And I was like, hey, um, I'll give you a lollipop if you eat her food. And she ate her food and she just couldn't wait until she had that lollipop, but she really didn't want to eat that food. And you could tell she was sort of like, I hope this is over soon. And I caught myself in the middle of it and I was like, why am I doing this? I am putting her through something that she doesn't want to do so that she can get something that she really wants, which in return, it's sort of damaging our trust factor and is damaging our, that, that, um, uh, not that passion for the things and desires and manifestation. Because if you think about it, through our desire, through we really want something, we put all our power to it, right? Which is great for manifestation. But then if you back it up by, I have to do this something that I really don't want, and then you're pushing through that energy to get what you do want, then the resolve and the um, enjoyment of that, of receiving that, is not the same. It's not as satisfactory as it would if you did it. You know what? I just got a lollipop because my mom wanted to give me a lollipop, or I ate this food because I really wanted to eat this food. And so we slowly begin to create these cycles that, uh, or in these programs that are slowly pushing children um, to then become adults and then lack of receiving because the program, whether we understand it or not, is there that if I receive this, I'm probably going to have to pay it back in somehow, some way, or I'm going to have to be nice to this person, or, you know, if they give me a gift, now I'm going to have to give a gift back. And it, it, the, the beauty of being grateful and the beauty of trusting and being in that space of, oh, yeah, that's so nice. It sort of becomes an anxiety for some, not all, but for some, because now there's an anxiety that I must have do something in return. And slowly, what has ended up happening is, is that most people end up um, not receiving and or even putting themselves in that situation where they communicate or speak up about how they're feeling, that they need help, that they need this, because of that anxiety and fear of if I say something or if I do something um, or, or, or if I receive something, then I'm going to have to do something in return and I'm in debt now. So it's a mentality of I owe something or I must do something in return. Uh, so in what we're creating is not a receiving or a healthy form of receiving. It's creating fear. It's creating anxiety. It is creating that, um, that, that shutdown and that blockage and that belief that it's not absolutely necessary but it has slowly sort of creeped up on us um over generations where uh as children to get our children to do what we wanted them to do it was like a bribe or you know if you do this you'll get that and or in school if you do do if you do this you get that so the the passion and the desire to have things or to uh, manifest things is sort of broken because of this idea that in order for me to get this, I'm going to have to either sacrifice something, give something, I'm going to owe something, I'm going to be in debt, and I'm going to want to have to do something I don't want to do in order for me to receive this. And so I really want you to think about that and go deep and tell me what you think, because I do believe that in some sort of way, um, it does break our trust, our trust that when you receive, that's it. If I do something for you, then that's it. I did it because I wanted to, not because I'm expecting something back. But if we, if you have grown up with this programming, then you may feel that, oh my God, now I'm going to have to do something back. And it may be just something that's quickly in the back of your head, just sort of creeping in there, um, just of that thought that instead of just being that full gratitude and present and being just thankful, uh, we sort of slowly begin to tell ourselves, well, now I have to do something like, or now I, you know, I received help. Um, now I'm either not good enough or 
I have to do something back or now I owe this person or, you know, it, you begin to sort of separate people where you begin to bring them up and you bring yourself down. If that makes any sense, think about this. If you, um, if I, somebody helps me with something, now I owe this person something. So you slowly begin to sort of put them on an imaginary pedestal of I have, I owe you something. I must do something for you. Now I'm in debt to you. And you're slowly bringing yourself down. Uh, and, and this all just working through the mind uh, where that person, and then slowly the more, and those who suffer from anxiety slowly begin to create a gap. And I see a lot of people who even stop talking to people so that they don't have to face that and they don't have to face that fear that, you know, oh my God, I can't, you know, I can't do something for you right now, uh, but I feel like I have to. And there's that guilt that sort of eats you. Um, and it's really interesting to think about that, that it goes back to childhood. It goes back to, you know, how uh, we have been raised as a collective. And I mean, again, it changes for everybody. Some people may not be able to receive love. Some people may not be able to receive help. Some people may not be able to receive advice. Um, you know, just let people in. It looks totally different for everybody. And it may have affected you in a different way. If you had a healthy home, but in school, the program was given to you or and through your friends or, or slowly through society, through working, when, you know, working for someone, uh, we are doing something for them and expecting something in return because, I won't get anything unless I get something. Now, it's very important to know that, yes, there is the movement of energy, of exchange of energy, but there's a difference in level of consciousness of how you approach it because there's a difference when I do something for someone and there's an exchange of energy and I'm in full gratitude in return. I gave it with gratitude. And then if somebody uh, gave me an exchange of something and I received it with gratitude, that is totally different. What I'm talking about is sort of like that duality consciousness where there's a good and a bad and that's the one that is unhealthy that creates that blockage and that programming and that sort of negative idea and I don't like to use uh, negative because you know this just is but that sort of that negative idea that you know now there's a good and a bad and now I owe you or now I'm in debt or you know I'm not good enough because I couldn't do it on my own and so forth and so forth so it's a difference in consciousness of how you receive things that I'm talking about. Um, so I would like to know what you think. I would like to know um, how you see that theory and how you see that perspective because I do uh, can see it and how I, it would be applied to myself in my own life. I was brought up with bribery where if you do this, you get that. And you know, for so many years, it was so hard for me to receive. And I, again, I still struggle on deeper issues, um, just to be honest. Uh, but I'm, I have gotten there and I push myself because I'm learning to understand that as we receive through unity consciousness, then we are just being in that gratefulness and in that moment. And, you know, somebody does something because they desire to do so instead of they are doing it from uh, you owe me, I want you to do something for me in return or there's an expectation of something in return. So. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. And I hope you like this video. And I hope that you can share it. And maybe somebody else can see that perspective and begin to change and shift their minds and thinking about that. Because I can tell you, like I said, when I caught myself mid-form, you know, having my daughter eat her, um, her food, I said to myself, wow, I went through this when I was a child and I didn't understand it then. And obviously, I, you know, I got suckered into it. But I don't want my child to go through that. And if she doesn't want to eat her food, then I'll find other ways. Um, but bribery does definitely and can uh, damage our trust factor and our ability to receive in a healthy way. So let me know. See y'all. Have a good one.